Williams to Willie Mays. The Yankees' Mickey Mantle. 1989 Hall of Fame inductee Johnny Bench. And the ageless wonder Nolan Ryan. And into the 80s with Don Mattingly and Daryl Strawberry. All crossed through Cooper Stadium in Columbus, site of tonight's AAA All-Star Game. A year ago, the first ever AAA All-Star Game at Pilot Field in Buffalo. A gala gathering of baseball's greatest stars of the future. Heralded Greg Jeffries of Tidewater demonstrated his power stroke with a game-tying home run. And he belts this one to right field. And months later, that same stroke led the New York Mets charge all the way to the playoffs. Albuquerque's Mike Devereaux showed off his blazing speed in last year's Classic. And today, he's doing the same for the resurgent Baltimore Orioles. Devereaux is running. Pitches a strike. The throw. Tonight, future big league stars like Las Vegas' Sandy Alomar Jr. are gathered here in Columbus. Some say Alomar is already among baseball's best catchers, but he's still waiting for his call to the majors. Albuquerque's Ramon Martinez heads the pitchers. He hurled a shutout in his one appearance for the Dodgers this year against the Atlanta Braves. Now he's striving for a return ticket to Los Angeles. from Columbus, Ohio. It's the second annual AAA All-Star Game. The stars of the future. Tonight, we're at Cooper Field here in Columbus, Ohio. It's the American League against the National League. And the second year for this format, in which the PCL, the International League, and the American Association have come together for an All-Star Game, giving us truly the cream of the crop in AAA baseball. Hello, everybody. I'm Ron Franklin, and welcome in this evening. Ken Singleton will handle the color commentary on this one tonight. And if anybody has a great appreciation for this city and this ballpark, it's the gentleman to my left, because this was your last stop before heading up to the bigs, wasn't it? 19 years ago. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Yes, it was. But it was my last minor league ball game in this particular park. Hit a home run that night. We lost the ball game. Our manager, Chuck Hiller, kind of screamed at the team a little bit after the ball game, told us we had played very poorly. And then he turned to me and told me I was going to Chicago. And I tried to figure out what's in Chicago. Then I remember the Mets are in Chicago. I was going up to the major leagues, meet the Mets. And from then on, the rest of my home runs were hitting the major leagues. Did not have much of a bag to pack, but the young man did not care. Third man on the telecast tonight handling the dugouts and anything else that goes on down here on the field during this AAA All-Star game is Joe Buck, and he's standing by with a couple of tonight's All-Stars. Joe? Thanks, Ron. I'm here with a couple of stars that are going to shine tonight for you. First of all, Todd Zeal on my right from Louisville and Greg Vaughn from Denver. Todd, you and Greg are certainly not strangers to each other. It seems like everywhere you go in the minor league system, there's Greg, and what a competition you two have had. Yeah, it's been a great competition over the last uh, three seasons. Greg and I have played against each other and battled it out for home runs and RBIs. And uh, Greg's nudged me out on the home runs all three years, but uh, hopefully I'll get him back this year. Todd, 18 home runs, 68 RBIs. It's no secret you've had a terrific offensive season so far, but how is Todd Zeal, the catcher, coming along? Well, I started off a little bit slow, uh, you know, but I've been throwing well lately. Uh, you go through the midseason period of being a little bit tired but I think uh, you know I'm ready to get a little bit revitalized and get back and throw Greg out if he tries to run on me at least <laughs> and on my left is Greg Vaughn from Denver Greg 19 home runs in your first triple A season but yet you said you really don't consider yourself a true power hitter no I don't you know I just try to hit the ball hard you know hit line drives and you know, I've been fortunate enough so far you know to hit some home runs but I don't consider myself a power hitter I want to be known as Greg Vaughn all-around player you know play good defense uh, steal some bases and you know contribute to the team in many ways uh, but I don't consider myself uh, you know a power a true power hitter I consider myself a base stealer and Todd's gonna have to throw me out <laughs> Greg last year the double-a all-star game MVP this year if you could garner that honor again that would be something in a showcase like this uh, yeah it would be you know uh, my uh, parents and all my friends back home didn't get to see me play in a double-a all-star game but they'll be watching tonight, so, uh, and all my buddies back home down at uh, Shakey's Pizza and my teammates back in Denver, so uh, I got to do something tonight. <laughs> Folks, remember these two names and faces, Todd Zeal of Louisville, Greg Vaughn of Denver, two major league superstars just waiting for their chance to shine. Good, good luck tonight, fellas, and back to you, Ron.
Thanks, Joe. We'll be listening uh, for more comments from you during the ball game. And the best of luck to those two. And Ken, I guess we should point out, as far as this is an off period of time, and it's a fun type of ball game because it's an exhibition game, but every player in the pro ranks would love to have that feather in his cap of being an MVP. Well, certainly, I think any player that steps on the field, Ron, wants to perform at his best in front of a crowd or on TV. In this case, a lot of these players don't get a chance to shine on television. Tonight's their night. And also, there's some general managers and some managers out there watching, watching their top prospects in AAA in action tonight. And they want to perform well for them as well. We have a special treat, I guess you would say, for the uh, viewers tonight. They can select the most valuable player in this AAA All-Star Game. 1-900-990-9000 is the number you call. It'll cost you 95 cents. The operator will ask you, American or National League, and then you give the first three letters. That's the first three letters of uh, the last name. And you will, in fact, select the MVP in this one this evening. Well, it is not a team against team situation, so we don't really talk about keys of this one tonight. But as far as strategy, I guess, uh, just back to what you were saying, be seen and be seen well. Well, they want to play well. There's no doubt about it being the MVP or whatever. They want to win the ball game too. I'm sure that these ball clubs and the managers are going to play to come out on top. The starting pitchers in this one tonight at a very interesting matchup. Power against finesse. On the left side is Ramon Martinez out of Albuquerque, the Dodger organization. He went up to the bigs and threw a shutout earlier this year. Tom Drees, the gentleman on the right, well, all he did was throw two no-hitters in one week. That was back in May, the two starters in this evening's ball game. So we're just a few moments away for the first pitch in this, the second AAA All-Star game. The stars of the future. The AAA All-Star Game on ESPN is brought to you by Columbus, Ohio. Tonight's AAA All-Star Game coming up next. In the league is Pete McCannon of the Iowa Cubs. It's his fifth year to manage in the Cubs organization. Leading off for Pete in playing shortstop is Jeff Houston of Indianapolis, second in the American Association in hitting. In the number two spot is designated hitter Junior Noboa, also from Indy. He leads the league in hitting. Second baseman Mark Lemke will bat third. He plays for Richmond in the Braves organization. The cleanup man is catcher Todd Zeal of the Louisville Red Verge. Another tab is can't miss for the majors. In the number five spot is third baseman Tom O'Malley of the Tidewater Tides, batting 310 with 63 RBIs. The first baseman is Scotty Madison. He'll bat six. He plays for Nashville. Good glove man, only three errors this year. In the number seven hole is left fielder Gerald Clark from Las Vegas, hitting 316 with 12 home runs. In the number eight position, right fielder Keith Miller from the Philadelphia Farm Club in Scranton. And in the number nine spot is center fielder Mike Huff. Plays at Albuquerque, batting 321 with 51 RBI. The umpires in tonight's ballgame, Jeff Evans will be behind the plate. Chuck Merriweather at first, Kip Arnold is at second, Joe Mickle is at third. Gary Cedarstrom is in left field, and Ron Barnes is down the right field line. Ringing their bells in Columbus, Ohio. An age-old tradition which we'll tell you more about as we continue with this telecast. And the All-Stars have taken the field. And about 4 o'clock this afternoon, we didn't know if we were going to be afforded this opportunity, Kim. Boy, the rains really came down as they did yesterday. And in fact, the weather conditions right now at Cooper Stadium, as you look at what are only partially cloudy skies, 78 degrees, supposed to go into the 60s tonight. The wind out of the west at 5, very high humidity. And the bottom line, we'll kind of look at and say, well, that's possible. Thunderstorms, supposedly, for the area. Excuse me, Rod. Defensively, tonight for the American League Stars, around the right field, we have Kevin Moss of the Columbus Clippers in center field from Vancouver. The speedy Lance Johnson in left field, Greg Vaughn, power and speed. At third base, true fielder Scott Kill, Kill Cool Ball. At shortstop, Randy Velarde will be taking care of the shortstop position. Billy Bates will be at second. Hal Morris will be at first base. Francisco Cabrera will be doing the catching from Syracuse. And Tom Drees, double no-hit fame, will be on the mound tonight for the American League Stars. There you see the numbers on Tom Drees. And when you look at him in stature, 6'6", six, six. he has won seven, has lost eight, an ERA of 3.01. 108 innings pitch, and look at strikeouts, only 39. You wouldn't think of him as the finesse pitcher, but of the starters tonight, he is. He's going to have to be cute. He's going to have to keep, keep the ball down in the strike zone, sinker, slider, fastball, occasionally on the inside for the right-handed hitters. And he's going to have to have excellent control of all his pitches if he wants to stop these National League sluggers. 
Well, for you people in the state of Nebraska, you know that he went to Creighton University. That, of course, is Bob Gibson School. He is not quite overpowering like Mr. Gibson. Averages 3.25 strikeouts per ball game. And to lead it off, here in the top of the first inning, out of Indianapolis, Jeff Houston was up last year for a period of time with the Montreal of the big leagues. Fourth year pro not drafted out of the University of Wyoming. Looks at a strike on the inside corner. Ron Houston's the type of player has excellent speed, a very good defender at shortstop. He came up last September, as you mentioned, he hit 310 for the Expos. Really showed manager Buck Rogers that he has a future in the major leagues. And an excellent July, hitting 423. And last year, the youngster has good speed. Still learning as far as stealing bases. But in double A ball at 56, that was in Jacksonville. The dimensions on the ballpark and the, the pitchers love it. Left field, 355. Power alley, 385. Straight away, 400 to right center, 365. And on the right field line is 330. Houston will step out for a moment as the count is at one and two. Opening up the 1989 AAA All-Star Game in the state of Ohio. Tries to. That 385 sign is in deepest left center field, and it's certainly dear to my heart. The last home run I hit the minor leagues went directly over that sign, just be uh, below the flag pole in deepest left center. Popped it into shallow center field. Shortstop, Velarde is there for the first out. Good look at the shortstop. Velarde has excellent Batting power second. with 10 home runs. From you don't see that much power Indians, from a middle infielder. The designated hitter, number one, Junior Noboa. Junior Noboa, a ninth year player. But consider this, still only 24. He signed at the age of 16 by the Indians. This year, he's been very hot, hitting over 400 for most of the year. He's dropped down, if you can call dropping down, hitting 393. Three starts him off with a slow curve in the outside corner for a strike. You know, it's interesting in talking with the coaches about Noboa and that batting average, and the uncanny keeps coming up. They say he is impossible to keep off the bases. Uses the whole field when he's hitting. There's hardly a way to defense a man who uses the whole field, and that's one reason why he has such a high average. This particular pitch, Drees is able to pump a fastball towards the outside half of the plate. And you can see how Nabo was trying to hit that the right field. To the first baseman as he nubs it off the hands and two down. Fly ball four. Let's take a look at the batting third from the Richmond Braves. Pete McCannon out of the, the Iowa second Cubs. Baseman. Number Manager has been in the organization Mark for five Lumpy. years. His ball club struggling a little bit this year, and in the meeting oh, yesterday, said good I swing just a little quicker, Junior. Said I. Uh, <laughs> he said I picked a heck of a year to quit smoking, didn't I? <laughs> ball club, the Iowa Cubs, are currently 20 games under 500. I played against Pete. He was with Minnesota over when I was with the Orioles, and he was a utility type player. And Manager Gene Mock made good use of his talents. Mike Lemke out of Richmond. With two out here in the top of the first inning. He gets the nod over Novoa to start uh, second. Only five errors in 88 ball games. Strike to the outside corner. Good looking pitch to bring it even at one. Drees dropped over a changeup, so he's uh, already started to vary his pitches. There's another one. Jim Beecham over at third base out of Richmond, and Steve Smith is at first. Those are the coaches. They will rotate off the fist to the shortstop caught on the fly for Velarde. So three up and three down for the National League. All fly balls. And we head to the bottom of the first inning in this AAA All-Star game from Columbus. 
Managing for the American League is former Yankee great Bucky Dent. It is fifth year working to the Yankee organization, the third here in Columbus. Leading off in playing center field is Lance Johnson of Vancouver. He heads the PCL and stolen bases. Batting second is first baseman Hal Morris of Columbus. Batting 312 has nine home runs. The left fielder is Greg Vaughn. He'll bat third. Plays for Denver. Leads the American Association in home runs with 19. The cleanup man is big D.H. Jim Wilson of Calgary. Has 80 RBIs. The right fielder is Kevin Maz. He'll bat fifth, also from Columbus. Leads the International League in hitting at 331. In the number six spot is catcher Francisco Cabrera. Plays at Syracuse, batting 327. The third baseman is Scott Coolball. He'll hit seventh. He's from Oklahoma City. And tabbed by many as can't miss to the bigs. In the number eight hole is shortstop Randy Velarde of Columbus. May see lots of playing time tonight. The only true shortstop in camp. And in the number nine hole is second baseman Billy Bates of Denver. Very, very aggressive young player. Take a look at the defense for the National League. Keith Miller from Scranton in right field. Mike Huff, excellent fielder, good speed in center. Gerald Clark around in left, still learning to play the outfield. Tom O'Malley, the veteran at third base. Jeff Houston, excellent player, makes all the plays at short. Mark Lemke, almost made the Braves in spring training. He will be at second. Veteran Scotty Madison at first base. Todd Zeal, up and coming superstar, maybe in the National League, it's catching. And Ramon Martinez, who already has made an effect on the National League race. 10 and 2, Ken, his record with a 279, and we mentioned off the top of the telecast tonight, was called up by the Dodgers through a shutout and then came back down. Tell us about his numbers and what we can look for. Well, you can look for a great fastball, 90 miles per hour with the fastball, and his second best pitch, believe it or not, is his changeup. The reason why he's in the minor leagues is to work on his breaking ball. And talking to Steve Smith, manager of the Las Vegas Stars who has faced Martinez a number of times. He says if he gets his breaking ball over tonight, he will be just about unhittable. One other thing of note about Martinez, he is the youngest player in the game tonight. Born in 1968, he has just turned 21. So that means that he was signed by the Dodgers at the ripe old age of 16. I don't think he could drive yet. <laughs> Here's Bucky Dent. Rumor has it. 1978 World Series hero against the Los Angeles Dodgers down in the dugout. He is miked tonight, as is Pete McCannon. And as the ball game goes on, we'll let you hear some leading off for the American choice Lady. comments from the, from the, the gentleman. Canadians. Hopefully they won't the be too choice other. as we go Number along. Two. <laughs> Lance Johnson. Lance Johnson will lead it off. Lance came up with the St. Louis Cardinal system, and that's an indication right away that he can run. Stolen bases this year, total of 30, and we're only at the halfway mark in the season. First delivery from Martinez, low and away. If the youngster can run. In fact, he is rated as the fastest base runner in the PCL. Fastball in the inside corner as both pitchers trying to establish that they will come inside with the fastball, both doing it early on here. The fastballs will help set up the other pitchers' changeups at tailing away from a left-handed hitter like Johnson. And that might have been a changeup right there. You notice defensively when they when you have a speedy hitter and a slap hitter like Johnson at the plate. The outfield has a tendency to shift to the opposite field and play pretty close. And infield to Tom O'Malley had been in, but he moves back with a couple of strikes on Johnson. Here's the defense, and part of what Ken was talking about, uh, they are playing very shallow on him. Now, if he does get a hold of one to get one in the gap, we will see a track meet in a hurry. 2-2 <laughs> two, two the count. Martinez, you can hear him really pop in the mid. He can throw. Johnson has worked extensively with Walt Raniak during the spring training and the time that he spent in the major leagues. And you see that Raniak influence on the swing, on the follow through. He see he holds the bat with one hand, and that's a Walt Raniak trademark that goes back to hitters with the Red Sox. Watch the top hand come off the bat, follow through with one hand, and Wade Box swings that way. White Evans, and it all goes back to when Raniac was with the Red Sox. Line to the center field, but playing perfectly is Mike Huff, and there's one down. Batting second from the Columbus Clippers. First baseman, number 23, 
Hal Ruddy, the manager at Omaha, is at third base, and Tom Kotsman is over at first for the American League. Tom in his third year at Edmonton, and oh my goodness, Morgana making her second appearance at the AAA All-Star Game. And as you would think, it's a hometown player that decides to give the kiss. Hal Morris of Columbus is the one that got the kiss. The guard will escort Morgana, and she's two for two in the AAA All-Star Game. Last year, she was in Buffalo. <laughs> she gets the police escort out, and I think I've read an article somewhere where only two towns in Morgana has spent time in jail because of running on the field, and one was Baltimore, and the other was Houston. So I don't think she'll be going back to those two cities anytime soon. Al Morris, one of four players from the Columbus Clippers on this American League team, played his college baseball at the University of Michigan. He was a teammate of Barry Larkin on the ground to the left side. O'Malley with the long throw, and it gets away. And they're going to call him out because he turned towards second rather than back inside the line. So a base hit, and then Morris is tagged out. Well, it's very obvious that Morris didn't make the turn towards second base, but the key here is the heads-up play of second baseman Mark Lemke, who backs up the long the throw from Tom O'Malley. Now, this the is a tough play to begin with. The throw is wide. Gone. Scotty Madison can't get to it. And Lemke heads up all the way as the Nationally picks up an out. Here's the hustle by Morris. He can smell a base hit. He has it right here. But making that turn, as you see Lemke going to the ball. Heads up play by Mark Lemke at second base. This is his home ballpark. And I think he was looking for a different bounce, knowing what happens with the ball when it caroms over there. And it didn't do exactly what he anticipated. So he gets the base hit and then is thrown out. Greg Vaughn out of Denver. Having a slow start in July, hitting only 139. But the numbers are there and also the credentials are there. High fly ball. That one is going to go foul. Combination of power and speed. I think the only weakness in Greg Bond's game at this moment is his ability to play the outfield. And that's why he's here in AAA. Eventually, you have to have the feeling this young man is going to move up to the Brewers or another major league club. Strike called, and the count goes even at two. So to demonstrate the speed that Ken is talking about, almost 50% of all the hits are extra base hits. Two two delivery with two out and strike three called as he has rung up. So Greg Vaughn goes down and strikes. Ramon well, Martinez showing what he needed to be a major league Donald pitcher, Barnett. the ability to throw to the Donald corners. Barnett. Keep it out of the middle Please of the plate. You're going to have some success. And there's a fastball right on the corner. So we're going to take a break. Three up, three down. And due up for the National League is Zeal, O'Malley, and Madison. No score, top of the second inning. The AAA All-Star Game, Cooper Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. And what has turned into a very nice evening after rain this afternoon, and Todd Zeal out of Louisville steps in. And Ken, here's a young man that they put an asterisk by his name as far as future, and where we're going to see him. Probably the best hitting prospect in all of AAA. His numbers would uh, attest to that, certainly. Curveball misses or catches it on the outside and it brings it even at one. You might ask if these two pitchers in the ballgame tonight have ever faced off against each other. And in fact, just last Friday night, Drees ended a three-game losing streak and one over Martinez. Drees went six innings, gave up three runs. Martinez had nine strikeouts in the ballgame, going six and a third. Still ended up with the loss. That's right. Off the fist, and the count goes to 2 1. Right back up here toward us. Getting back to Todd Zeal, of course, Louisville, the farm club of the St. Louis Cardinals. And at this moment, Tony Pena is having an all star type year in St. Louis, made the all star ball club. And 
A lot of people would like to see this young man in a Cardinal uniform very soon, but the Cardinals manager Whitey Herzog, general manager Dal Maxwell, do not want to rush him. They want him to have a full year at AAA, get that experience, and improve on his catching skills. 2-2 pitch, misses inside, and the count goes full. That is the top slugging average in AAA at 533, and he has been red hot in July. Hitting almost 410 games as the changeup misses outside, and he'll be on with the free pass. Well, Dree is giving Zeal a little bit of respect on the 3 2 changeup. Third baseman. And missing far out over the plate for Tom ball four. O'Malley. Brings up the third baseman, Tom O'Malley, out of Tidewater. <laughs> Hello there. Looking for a capacity house here in Columbus. There are a few empty seats down the left field line, and I think that's because of the rain late this afternoon, but still, the, the crowd is coming in here at Cooper Field. O'Malley, by the way, one of only three repeaters from last year's AAA All-Star game. Joey Cora, also Sandy Alomar. Both of them are in the dugout. We'll see them later on tonight. But O'Malley had good numbers in the All-Star game last year, Kenny. He was two for four. He's a very good hitter, and he's the type of player you would think could help some major league ball club. Has been well-traveled, played numerous clubs in the big leagues, but from third base, in the major leagues, they're looking for a little bit more power than Tom O'Malley has been able to supply over the years, but his average has always been around that 300 mark. A lot of respect in the outfield as they play him straight away and deep. Swung on and missed. Good luck at Mr. Drees. Bucky Dent was extremely pleased to hear him say when he arrived yesterday, he said, Wednesday is my regular work day. <laughs> Adam Peterson had thrown 128 pitches just a couple of nights ago, so Bucky was kind of worried about his numbers as far as pitchers. This is high, and the count goes to 2-1. Drees trying to drop a breaking ball over the outside corner. See his motion very fluid. High leg kick, follow through. He's ready to feel the ball, but the pitch was high in the strike zone, and O'Malley didn't go for it. Top of the second inning, no score. Runner down at first is Zeal. Wanted to go, and he holds up. Now it's 3-1. Scotty Madison, the first baseman, who plays for Nashville, is on deck. Most all-star games, Ryan, you don't see very many signs, but this would be a good chance to send Zeal from first base, and I think uh, Dries is thinking along the same lines as he throws over. O'Malley's ahead, 3-1 on the count, a good contact hitter. You heard Bucky say in the Sports Center interview that he had with Joe Buck. He said, yeah, we may let out all the stops tonight. We're going to have fun and strike two call. It was not a play on. Dries comes in with the fastball, and O'Malley doesn't even go for it. O'Malley might have been looking for some other pitch, but although that's a wide strike zone <laughs> from fire Jeff Evans. Help Mr. Dries out, and maybe Zeal will be moving on this 3-2 pitch. 3-2 pitch, and he is going to go back over to first. O'Malley with a very open stance. Zeal over at first. Full count and swung on, and this one is lined high up into the stand. Somebody gets a souvenir. It was a shame yesterday, the rain, late afternoon thunderstorms wiped out the home run competition. Lots of people were showing up at the ballpark to get a look at the All-Stars as they arrived in Columbus. Folks, you have to understand, a lot of these players don't get the pub that you might think they were anxious to show their talents to the nation and back-to-back -back walks. Runners at first and second as O'Malley trots down to first. And Scotty Madison comes to the plate with runners aboard, nobody out. The first baseman, Cabrera, is sitting on the outside the corner. Stands, number 18. Sometimes when a pitcher is Madison. struggling with his control, you try and give the target a little bit more closer to the middle of the plate just to give him a better look, and he might catch a corner for you. That one was outside by quite a margin. 
Scotty Madison, interesting story out of Nashville, the American Association. Tenth year in professional ball. And right now he's playing in his hometown, Nashville, Tennessee, because he attended Vanderbilt. Switch hitter, line drive type hitter. Three is checks the runners right back to the middle. Goes to second for one, back down to first, and it is dropped by the first baseman, Hal Morris, and the run will come home to score. Madison will head down to second base as it went into the dugout. The left fielder from the Las Vegas Stars. Number Looks like a routine double play ball. Jared Clark. One hopper back to Drees. He comes up with it and finds Stanley. He makes an excellent throw to second base, right on the money to Bellardi. But here's where the problems come in. The throw is just a little bit high and off the glove of Morris. And a runner comes in to score. So it's one to nothing. The National League on top is Gerald Clark out of Las Vegas. The left fielder steps in. Boy, this guy. He come to all-star games regardless of the majors triple a or what and they have some credentials he's never hit below 300 in his career dribbles this one down to the first baseman Morris flips over to Dries and down to third goes Scotty Madison two men down one more look at the double play right ball fielder. now Dries is From thrown to Velarde is right there but Barons. I believe the Number key 15. here is that Keith Miller. Morris has to reach across his body to get the throw, and it glances off his glove, and that allows the run to score. Keith Miller plays at Scranton in the American Association. Of course, that's the Phillies Farm Club. 26 years of age. Bender on the outside corner for strike one. This guy has really been valuable and playing four different positions outfield second first and also uh, catching besides DHing some for the ball club I believe he's just learning how to catch and that would only make him more valuable whether it's at the triple-a or the major league level eventually managers like to have those players on the bench they can pull off and just say point to a position and he can go play it Scotty Madison down to third base is two out. The National League has scored first here in this Triple-A All-Star game. It leaded one to nothing. Change up. Has to go for it as he thought it might be getting the outside corner. And he fouls it back and the count will stay one two. So far, Dries has shown the ability to throw just about any pitch over the plate. Change up, fastball. He likes to run that hard fastball on the inside, and the target is in, but it's a breaking ball. Off the fist, and Morris will have it for the third out. But not before the National League on a couple of walks. They do not record a hit in the inning, but they score a run, the first of the ball game. And as we head to the bottom half of the Your inning, the National League won, the, the American right. League nothing. Ohio Wilson, and Maz, and Cabrera are due. Triple-A home run leaders Greg Vaughn, who's in this ball game tonight, plays for Denver out of the Brewers organization, leads it with 19, and he's tied with Matt Williams of Phoenix in the Giants Farm Club. Then Zeal, Gonzalez, and Jim Wilson of Calgary, who is also in this game tonight. Jim with 14. Leading off for the American has got 80 RBI so far in the season. Fans, the designated hitter, number 44, Jim Wilson. Well, and speaking of the devil, here he is. Leads all Triple-A as you would imagine with 80 RBIs in fact Ken he's already recorded 12 just in the month of July we just gotten started look at the arms on that guy they're as big as most people's legs pretty by a ball just high Martinez working his second inning mentioned back in June the 5th he was called up he shut out Atlanta six to nothing then the next day he was back to Albuquerque which had to have been a little bit puzzling to the young man I would think so after doing a job maybe he gave up too many hits what was it a six hitter against the Braves I believe it was Ramon Martinez strength four 
out is two on. Well, on the night that we were worried about the weather, it has turned off very mild, a nice breeze, and is very, very comfortable. Swung on by Wilson, gets it off the fist. Second baseman Lemke is back, and he has it for the first out. The right fielder from the Columbus Clippers, number 22, Kevin Moss. I'm here with an old teammate of yours, Kenny Singleton, Jim Beecham. And Jim, a lot of talk about the managers, a lot of talk about the players, and here you are, a coach with the squad, and you have to be pleased to be that. Well, it's a lot of fun. It's been a, a great uh, festivity, and it's, it's, it's exciting, and it's good for the fans, and it's good for everybody in the country gets to see these up-and-coming stars. And your club, the National League, has just taken the lead, and this team is here to win, aren't they? That's right. We hadn't hit the ball too good so far, but we got lucky and uh, got us run last inning. So hopefully we'll start uh, making a little better contact. Let's go back up to the booth. Okay, thanks, Joe. Thanks, Jim. Catcher. You were watching Kevin Miles of Columbus Chiefs. stroke a single into center field. Francisco that's something that the Clipper fans if here in Columbus have gotten used to throughout the season. Moss has been up around the league league and hitting all year in the International League. Francisco Cabrera. And in the situation that he faces right now, this is Dominican versus Dominican. <laughs> As we mentioned, Martinez is the youngest in the ballgame at 21. Cabrera is the youngest on the American League squad. He's only 22. Has 20 RBIs this month and is hitting right at 400. So that was in June. I beg your pardon. Very hot month for him. A changeup from his countrymen over the outside corner for a strike. 327, six home runs, 50 runs batted in. Impressive numbers. But the figure here's another young man on his way up. 22 years old. It takes a while to learn that catching position and how to handle pitches. On the ground to the left side. O'Malley back over to first, and it's a double dip. So for the American League, Kevin Moss gets the base hit, but the double play erases any threat in the inning, and as we head to the third, one to nothing, National League on top. We'll be back in just a moment. Fans have seen the collisions around home plate, but second base is a place where it can get very rugged as well. Watch the takeout by Kevin Moss of Mark Lemke, and that's what second basemen and shortstops have to go through in making double plays. Yeah, in the colleges, some of those kids are not accustomed to that. In fact, they're not. <laughs> but once you come into the pros, that's what you could expect. Number nine hitter is Huff. Mike Huff playing at Albuquerque. And in fact, he is the hottest hitter in this game, and he's batting ninth. He is 15 for 34 in the month of July, which is 441, and he picks on the first pitch. Pops it down the right side. And just in foul territory will be taken by Morris. There's another all-star. I didn't know he from played for Indiana Nashville. Indians, number two, <laughs> Jeff Husson. Baseball, I love it. <laughs> Back to the top of the order, Jeff Houston. Well, at least he had better seats tonight. <laughs> yeah, but that'll probably be taken care of before the night's over. Houston flied out to the shortstop back in the first inning. of the Montreal Expos, an organization that has just what appears to be numbers and numbers of great young players in the minor leagues, not only AAA, but AA and down. They were rated number one by Baseball America as far as their minor league organization and the number of prospects that they have. They've traded a few of recent. Uh, Sergio Valdez going to the Braves in the Zane Smith deal. Down low for a strike. Let's go down to Joe Buck, who was visiting with O'Malley down in the dugout. I'm down here with Tom O'Malley. Tom, you were involved in that first scoring run for your ball club, the National League. This is your second time here in the All-Star Game. It's a terrific event, isn't it? Well, there's no question about it. The uh, atmosphere is outstanding. They put on a great performance, and, you know, it's certainly an honor and a pleasure to be here, and, and I'm very thankful for it. Tom, you keep putting up terrific AAA numbers. You have to think sooner or later you're going to get that legitimate shot at the major leagues. Well, I keep keeping my fingers crossed, and, and you know, hopefully something good's going to happen here. Uh, all I can do is continue to go out there and play hard. Let's go back up to the booth. Thanks, gentlemen. Count goes fall to 3-2 as we play with one out. 
in the top of the third inning. National League leading one to nothing. Jeff Houston, a very selective hitter at the plate. Some, something you like to see in a, a hitter near the top of the lineup. Also sprays the ball to all fields. On the ground to the left side. Cool ball having to hurry. Makes the running throw, and you see why Bucky Dent smiled yesterday at the meeting and said, I like him. He said, I think this young man has got a real future. Well, cool ball is not only a good fielder, he he's an excellent hitter, hitter, but here you can see his defensive skills, Indians, charging in hard. Remember, Ryan Houston has good speed down the line, throwing on the run very accurately for the out. Junior Noboa flied out to the second baseman. His first at bat in the first looks at a slow curve just outside. Manager Tom Runnels of the Indianapolis Indians said the two top hitters in the league at one two in his lineup all year, Jeff Houston and Junior Noboa, who's been leading the American Association. And you can see why the Indians have been either near their top or at the top of their division all season long. goes to one two he was signed as what a free agent a six-year free agent last December after the Astros uh, had released him Miles F went off his left foot junior was up briefly this year in the major leagues uh, Damaso Garcia went on the disabled list for Montreal with a bad heel and the Expos called up junior in May and that was his slowest month in AAA only hit 323 during the month of May and this is something that will make every hitter stand up and take attention or maybe sit down for a while. Foul ball off the ankle. Those pitchers, they always seem to come back with another low and inside pitch. There's the target. Fouls it off and the count remains at 1-2. The pitchers relying on the hitters not to be quite as aggressive on that low and inside pitch. And going back to an all-star game that I played in, I was hit on the ankle by Rick Russell, yesterday's starter, in the 1977 game. And the first game I came back to play was against the Texas Rangers and Gaylord Perrin. And you know where Gaylord threw that first pitch? <laughs> right at my ankle. So pitchers have a way of knowing what's going on with the hitters. Boy is making him work, and this one goes down into the dirt, and the count goes even at two. Few sprinkles beginning to fall here in Columbus. Tom Grease, long, angular one at 6'6, but he is not the power type pitcher. You see the change up right there. Trying to entice him. It appears he doesn't want to throw in the bowl with too many fastballs. And after a few change up here, this must be this might be a good spot to try and throw one upstairs. On the ground to the shortstop. Velarde over to his teammate Morris, and that will do it in the top of the third for the National League. So they are three up and three down. National League continues to lead, and it'll be cool ball. Velarde and Bates. Has been talk of Randy Velarde. Switching from shortstop to third, you can see his good style at shortstop. Strong overhand throw right on target. We want to make use of his power, possibly in New York in the future. One to nothing to score, and as you can see, against that dark green background, out to straightaway center field, the rain's beginning to come back to Columbus, Ohio. Well, we were hoping that the that the weather folks here were not going to be accurate, but <laughs> looks like they're right on. Scott Coolball. Looks at a pitch high and inside. Oklahoma City of the American Association, property of the Rangers, has the least pro experience of any player here, signed just last June, just a little over two years ago. Long drive, deep right center field, and kiss that one goodbye. Scott Coolball. who spent, it, spent some time at the University of Texas. On the Columbus Clippers. He got hold of a fastball out over the plate. Well, he 
may have the least experience of anybody in this AAA All-Star game. And let me show you what a ride to the opposite field. The target was low and away. The pitch was about middle-middle. Strength, good extension with the swing, the follow-through. And when a hitter hits one like that, he knows it's going for a long ride. Randy Velarde, the shortstop, plays here in Columbus, getting a chance to show off in front of the home folks. And as we mentioned in the lineups tonight, he might get to see a lot of playing time because Zubella was called up. And I'm not, there's nobody else, actually, some other people that have played shortstop but are not regulars at that position. So we may see Randy quite a bit tonight. Originally signed with the White Sox, 1985. That was in the June draft. Good-looking pitch. Just on the outside corner, and it goes 1-2. The score tied. Velarde has shown some power this year. Ten home runs, 51 runs batted in. And think of the work that the Clipper players do during the week. Manager Bucky Dent has them lifting weights during the week, Ron. It's really shown some of these guys have some strong arms. The Clipper players have really come on with their power stack. So the regulations are that they lift twice a week. That's what the New York organization wants them to do, but it's reps and not for, for heavy weights. What they call to uh, maintain and sustain what they have. 2-2 so two, two the count. Most players nowadays work out throughout the year. They do more of the heavy lifting in the wintertime, but maybe they should do some more baseball-related exercises. A lot of injuries, particularly at the major league level. Swings and a fastball, and the count goes even at two. Over Brown, I believe it's over 200 players this year in the major leagues have spent some time on the disabled list. And that's quite a few. The numbers are incredible. In fact, the guys in the major leagues are talking about it, trying to figure out exactly why. Count goes full to 3 2. Rain continues to fall, but we've just been handed a note here that we are indeed glad to see that the weather forecast that the rain should not last very long and then clearing. 1-1 one, one tie. Strike three call. The second baseman from the Denver Zippers. Number Seemed one, to be Billy shaken Hates. by that home run by Scott Coolball. He comes back and strikes out the next hitter on a very tough hit. Well, speaking of Coolball, this was one of his teammates at the University of Texas, Billy Bates. Playing out at Denver, part of the Milwaukee organization. Up the middle. Houston, nice play, and he gets him for the second out. And let's go down to uh, to Joe Buck, who's with uh, Scott Kuhlbaugh. Ron, that's right. I'm with the man of the moment for the American League side, Scott Kuhlbaugh. Scott, that had to feel He's terrific, the first AAA All-Star game. What's it feel like? It feels great, I tell you. You know, he threw me a high inside curveball, and the next pitch I was looking fastball all the way because he's a hard thrower. And he got it down in my zone, and I went out the other way with it and got out of here. You've made no bones about it. You were a little bit embarrassed, if I can use that word, to be here at the AAA All-Star Game with the average that you have. However, the power has been there all season. Yeah, that's true. You know, before coming in this game, I started hitting the ball a lot better this past series, and I uh, came in here feeling pretty good. I'm happy so far with the power and the RBIs, but, you know, hopefully I can get that average up. Let's go back upstairs. Well, you could see Lance Johnson, and he gave it quite a ride. But Miller is there to bring it down. Well, let's take one more look. Miller goes a long way towards right center field. Now, the wind is, might have held this up a bit. It's blowing in from left. So on Cool Ball's home run, we have a tie ball game. It's the National League one and the American League one. For tonight, that's the number to call. It'll cost you 95 cents. It is touchstone phones the only. The They'll Richmond ask American or National League and give them the first four, three letters Lundy. of the last name of the player you want to vote for. 1-900-990-9000. You pick the person tonight. 1-1 one, one is our score as we head to the top of the fourth inning. And we have a new pitcher on the mound. Mike Trujillo comes to the ballgame, brings in a 6-2 record, an excellent ERA of 2.97 right-hander with the Toledo Mudhands of the Tigers organization. Sinker slider type pitcher. 
Started 10 games this year and is, as I said, has won six of them. His last 64 hits and 63 innings pitched. Mark Lemke screams wanted to right field and in fact you could see the water bounce up Ken as it bounced out there in right field and he's on to lead it off with a single in the port. Right, it should help that we have an artificial surface here Louisville in Columbus now, as hard the as the rain is coming down. We don't have to worry about the the ground or the natural surface fields as they have a tendency to do to get a little muddy and a little slippery for the player. Todd Zeal, the number three pick for the Cardinals in 1986 out of UCLA. He was twice all Pac-10. Zeal walked his first time up. Looks at a breaking ball down and away. On Trujillo, one and two and four starts with Detroit earlier this year. One one our score top of the fourth manager McKinnon Pete of course in the Cubs organization has been out in Iowa for a couple of years you have to wonder with the rain coming down and the possibility of only a five inning ball game will these managers manage any different to pick up a run well they want the exposure as we talked off the top but certainly they don't want to risk injury for anybody and if the conditions start to get too bad, that will be the first and major consideration uh, of both the uh, managers, McCannon and Bucky Dent. Some very valuable property out here on the field, if you will, a uh, Todd Zeal. Runner is going, and he stole that off the pitcher. Ball four, I beg your pardon. So Zeal is on the, the second straight one. And now the second the was Lemke, who was running on the play. Tom O'Malley. That might be a case of trying to pick up an extra run, having Lemke running on the pitch. One-one tie. American League and the National League. The Nationals with one base hit, and the American League now with three. O'Malley also walked his last time up, and Trujillo misses inside on the pitch. O'Malley was the youngest player in the National League back in 1982. That's when he made his debut with the San Francisco Giants. And is now in his seventh organization. He's been with the Giants, the White Sox, the Tigers, Orioles, the Rangers, the Expos, and now the Mets. It's a case of not unpacking your suitcase. And yeah, you have to give credit to O'Malley for the determination to keep going and try and make it back to the big leagues with various clubs. He is a good contact hitter, and this is an excellent situation for him. Nobody out, 1-1 one, one pitch. Runners at first and second. Lemke down at second, and Zeal is at first. Now that rain's coming down pretty hard, and you have to wonder if Trujillo looking for something to dry the hand off. You can see him walking. Wiping it off on his uh, on his pants leg. It starts raining like this. Even the rosin bag is of very little help. Pitches down low. You know, another credit that you can give to a player like O'Malley, who has been around for a bit, sometimes managers in the minor leagues are a little bit reticent to take guys on the club that have been around the block a couple of times. And several of the managers of uh, the clubs who were here paid in the confidence saying that he's not one who is going to cause a problem with younger players or rock the boat. Base hit up the middle. Lemke speeding home as the throw comes in into third base is Zeal. And Tom O'Malley comes up with a base hit up the middle as the rain falls even harder here in Columbus. O'Malley, a good contact type hitter. The first baseman, number 18, Left hitter Scotty Madison. Madison. Base runners very well. Hitting the ball the opposite way of the base runners are running. O'Malley hits it right back through the middle. Run comes around to score. Mark Lemke as the National League takes the 2-1 to one lead. Second base hit of the ball game for the National League. And Scotty Madison, the first baseman got on in an error 
back into his last at bat, which was the second. Had a nice little talk with Scotty Madison yesterday, uh, just before the rains came down, and mentioned the one time he hit against a left-handed pitcher, left-handed, and his dad told him there's a reason why I taught you to be a switch hitter. You hit right-handed against lefties. This ball's pulled foul. Back into the parking lot. Todd Zeal over at third base. Got on with the walk. Who's come back to haunt you every time, don't they, Ken? Scored on a leadoff walk back in the second inning. Back to the pitcher. He will come home, and now they got Zeal caught in a rundown. Cabrera chases him down, throw goes back to Coolbaugh, and he makes the tag. Now, with no outs, this is a base running mistake from the by Todd Zeal. Stars, the left fielder, you got to be able to score from Gerald third on Clark. any ground ball to the second or short. They would have been going for the double play, but back to the pitcher, you got to make sure he turns and goes for the double play before you start for home. Another look at it, the tapper back to the mound. Maybe Zeal thought it would get over Trujillo's head. It did not. The ensuing rundown will have him tagged out for the first out of the inning. He was in very safe territory when he was at third base. He should have stayed there. Runners at first and second. It's O'Malley down at second base. Scotty Madison is at first, and Gerald Clark, who grounded out to the first baseman unassisted. Back in the second inning. Two to one, National League on top. Trujillo trying to work very quickly. Well, this rain has to affect the concentration, both the pitchers and the hitters. But with Gerald Clark at the plate, he's the type of hitter who's not going to take too many pitches. He's a free swinger. He went 160 at-bats during a stretch this season without getting a base on balls. So you know he's going up there hacking. He's another Texan in the lineup tonight. He's from Crockett, Texas, attended Lamar University, which is down in southeast Texas in Beaumont. He was up for eight games earlier this year with San Diego. Ken, and I'm not sure how much longer they can allow this game to go on with the rain coming down the way it is. You can see around the pitcher's mound, it's really getting to be a tough situation as far as the cleats. Well, that's where they usually take care of first on the field. They don't want any pitchers slipping and sliding, be pulling a groin muscle or hurting yeah. their arms or shoulders. One out, two to the count, and Gerald Clark. Breaking ball, and he got him. Now pick him up, Keith. The right the breaking ball kind of hung on the way the to the plate. Wilkes-Barre, Red Barron. But it's in a pretty good spot. 15, up and in. Keith Miller. He ties up Gerald Clark, and he swings right through it. Had a good rip. Keith Miller out of Scranton. Flight out to the first baseman. That was his last trip, six year of pro ball. All has been with the Phillies, and it's his fourth year in AAA. Because Bolton's got the sixth and the seventh, okay? Bucky Dent on the phone to the bullpen, and heard him clearly enough. He said, Bolton has the sixth and the seventh innings. That's left-hander Tom Bolton from Pawtucket. So we could look for him a little bit later in the game. Best year for Miller, 1987. At Old Orchard Beach, Maine. 292, 16 home runs, and 54 RBIs that year. You just joined us. It's the top of the fourth. National League on top, 2-1. Two to one. This AAA All-Star game from Columbus, Ohio. Trujillo has decided a little more heat than the, than the breaking ball under the conditions. Strike three called, and that will do it. 
This is one way to get out of the rain, make a good pitch. Down and away, the outside corner. You see okay, the target fans. from Cabrera? This time it's for real. And it's right On there. On the count of three, the show is strikes out the last two batters, but what? Lemke comes across with a go-ahead run. It's the National League on top by one. Triple A average leaders, Junior Noboa, uh, out of the Expos organization, leads it 393. And Paul Javella was supposed to be here tonight. You see, he with a 338 average. And Kevin Maz of Columbus, he is in the ballgame tonight. And now a couple of defensive changes, Ken. Behind the plate for the National League, Carl Nichols of Tucson takes over. Tucson Toros. And on the mound from Indianapolis, their fine starter, Mark Gardner. Very impressive record at 10 and 1 with an ERA of 2.20. And look for his curveball. If the weather doesn't bother him too much, he has an excellent hook. See the ratio on strikeouts and innings pitched. Average just over one. In fact, he's won four of his last five starts. Last loss was back in the second week of June. Gardner also has excellent control, and that's one way to get a lot of strikeouts. He has the best curveball and rated with best control in the American Association. Count is at 0-1 to Morris. Curveball misses low. By the way, Morris's great uncle is former American League All-Star third baseman Buddy Lewis of the Washington Senators. Dolphs this one into right field. But defensively, they haven't played perfectly. And let's go to Joe Buck down in the dugout. Joe? Well, Ron, I'm down here with Randy Velarde, the starting shortstop for the American League squad. You also play here in Columbus during the regular season, so it has to be an extra treat for you to play here in your own home ballpark. Exactly. You know, being a part of an all-star game is a big treat, but playing in front of your home crowd is even that much better. You're normally a shortstop, but there's talk of you maybe moving to third base. That's what the Yankees might want. And it's nice to know that they're up there thinking about you down here. Yeah, it's very encouraging to know that, you know, uh, knowing that I, I can play shortstop, but they're also moving over to third, and, you know, there's going to be a chance there as well. Let's go back upstairs. Pops it up on the left side. O'Malley is there. No, I beg your pardon. The catcher is O'Malley was looking up with his arms spread apart, and it's Carl Nichols who had just come into the ballgame, the catcher, who has it for the second out. The designated hitter from the Calgary <laughs> Cannons, number 44. He thought he was going to catch Wilson. the ball, and then all of a sudden, that's the reason the arms went out, and Nichols said, hey, I've got it, and he was pretty good distance from it. I think he lost it in the lights there for a moment, Ken. Nichols stayed with it. Uh, former catcher from the Baltimore organization uh, traded this year to Tucson. It's a chance in the PCL. I think Jim Wilson, the designated hitter, flied out his first attempt today. 80 RBIs coming into the all-star break. Wilson had quite a turnaround, had no home runs and nine runs batted in in May. And then in June, he comes back with 10 home runs and 40 RBIs. That's turned it in a round. Swung out and missed and a good heater. As Mark Gardner just overpowers him on that one. Gardner was up in the big leagues for a while this year with the Expos. He spent some time in their bullpen early in the year. Montreal wanted him to come back down to AAA to work as a starter. I feel that his future is starting ball games. That they didn't want to waste him in relief in the big leagues. Line drive, but right to the shortstop. And Houston is there, and that will do it. Three up, three down for the American League in the fourth inning. And we head to the fifth. Our score, the National League 2 and the American League 1. Do up, Huff, Houston, and Noboa. The you know, Northern Division, Tacoma and Calgary tied at the top 14 and 10. And can you might explain, Vancouver, the, the asterisk there is uh, won the first half. Pacific Coast League uses a different format than the American Association. Association and the International League. They go by halves. The winner of the first half plays the winner of the second half at the end of the season to determine the, the playoff spots. And in those other two leagues, as we take a look at the Southern Division with Albuquerque, the Albuquerque Dukes, the farm club of the Dodgers on top by just a game over Colorado Springs. Well, Mike Huff, the number nine hitter in the order, will lead it off here in the fifth inning in the ball game and it's moving along rapidly. The rain has subsided somewhat. Attended Northwestern University. That was his college. It has a great ratio on stolen base percentage. 
121 out of 161 chances. But it's his first year in Triple A baseball. Well, he's a fine defensive outfielder, and he uses that speed very well to go get the ball. Breaking ball, lofts it into right field, and <laughs> Maz will come in to make the catch. The new pitcher is Adam Peterson. Out of Vancouver, the White Sox organization. 10-2 record. Number two, you got to think it's simply amazing that he's pitching that. Just two nights ago, he threw 128 pitches in a ball game, but in between starts, pitches do work. They rest a day, throw on the side, rest, and then pitch again. So this is his day to throw on the side. He's using it to throw in the AAA All-Star game. Jeff Houston looks at a fast strike right down the middle. Flight out and grounded out tonight. happened off the left side. Adam Peterson was an MVP in three sports in high school up in Provo, Utah. Up with Chicago, three games, two starts, had a record of 0-1. That was earlier this year. Unusual delivery as you take a look at it. Kind of very herky-jerky, and sometimes it bothers hitters. But it doesn't bother Jeff Eusens. He slaps one in the left field for a base hit. First base hit of the night for Houston. One out single and Junior Noboa. From the Indianapolis Indians, the designated hitter, number one, Junior Noboa. National League dugout. You can see a couple of the players trying to, to dry off. Carl Nichols had just come into the lineup. He was the one with the catching gear still on. Noboa looking for his first hit of the night. Flight out and also grounded out. This is a combination that's been working for the Indians all year long. Naboa batting second, Houston in the leadoff spot. Houston with the speed and Naboa with the bat control. 2-1 National League on top. And hit and run beautifully done. And that one will almost hit the gap as the run will come home. And Jeff Houston, no figure to hold him up down at second. And Naboa. No ball will hold up in second with the double as Houston down to third, and you can hear the reaction of the crowd. The second baseman from the Richmond Braves. Jim Beecham said, no, nah, let's be Number sure. Four, Mark Lemke. Kevin Moss did a great job of battling the ball, sliding on that wet turf. Houston off and running on the play. The hit and run worked perfectly by two players who have done it well all season long. Second baseman over the cover can't come up with a line drive. Now the ball will skip on AstroTurf when it's wet. Kevin Moss does a good job to get it back in. Watch the sliding stop. And I still believe, as the crowd did, that Houston would have scored all the way from first base. Jim Beecham deciding with one out to hold him up and not take any chances at, on a close play. Mark Lemke, the Richmond second baseman. He's one for two tonight. Singleton scored the go-ahead run. That was back in the fourth inning. As the National League trying to kick things up a little bit here. Lead it by one and then trying to get some insurance, and they will on this base hit by Lemke. They're going to hold him at third and the throw up the first baseline. Pitcher was not there covering in some excellent base running by Junior Navarro. Jim Beecham had held him, and all of a sudden, when he realized the pitch came up the first baseline, the pitcher was not there to cover. Peterson was back behind the play. And Junior just walked on home. But Ashley gets a break. They've up the score to four to one as Lemke slaps the base hit in the right field. Now Houston will score easily. You can see right here Jim Beecham swinging the arm, telling the bowler to go around and score, and then he stops him later. The boa got a break when the throw was offline, and now he scampers and heads for home with the second run on the base hit. That's just smart base running right there. Francisco Cabrera turned around to make the flip to his pitcher, and Peterson was backing up behind the plate, which uh, he didn't realize that they were going to have a play. Carl Nichols. Out of Tucson. 
Nichols known more for his defensive skills has a very fine throwing arm and he's not afraid to use it his hitting hasn't been as consistent one of the reasons why the Orioles decided to trade him with the dearth of catching in the major leagues you hate to give up on a young catcher four to one National League leading All right buddy that's Mark Lemke with his lead at first. Nichols tries to hold up, and it is a ball, 2-1. Adam Peterson fouls that one off Cabrera's face mask. Stop momentarily and it is cooling off but still some very dark clouds back to the northwest good luck at uh, Francisco Cabrera we know as the umpire Jeff Evans went out to talk to pitcher Adam Peterson I was I was thinking that gave Cabrera a little bit of a rest after taking a shot off the mask 2-2 Two -two the count with one out and base head up the middle Lemke will pull up at second. And let's go down to Joe Buck in the dugout with Junior Naboa. That's right, I'm down here with Junior Naboa. And Junior, nothing new for you. You've been doing it all season. The hit and run worked perfectly. Yeah, you know, we just, uh, you know, we just working in there. And, uh, you know, so far, just very nice to me. Junior, you're hitting. You've been hitting all around the 400 mark all year. You have to think, gosh, what do I have to do? Hit 500 to get up there? It's got to be frustrating a bit. Well, yeah. You know, but it's something I don't have a control, so, uh, you know, I just, I think, you, uh, but you, have, you know, you have to, you know, you play hard. Let's go back upstairs. Thanks, Joe, and a good job by Junior. After getting Mike Huff to fly out the leadoff beginning, now the National League is now put together single, double, single, single, and they are on top four to one, and Peterson has come to the dugout, possibly a little bit fatigued, and we have a pitching change. Well, Bucky Dent realizes that Peterson did throw 128 pitches uh, just two days ago. And he goes to the left-hander, Tom Bolton. Go, buddy. Try and stop this National League rally. Tom Bolton, 7-5 and five record. We're going to come back and tell you more about him in just a moment. Let's take a break. 4-1, to one, National League leads in the top of the fifth inning. We'll be right back of the American Association by three and a half over Buffalo, then Nashville and Louisville. Very good race in that East. And in the West, Denver leading by three and a half over Omaha, Oklahoma City, 10 back in Iowa at 11 games off the pace. New pitcher in the ball game will be Tom Bolton, the left-hander for the American Red Sox organization. He spent 10 years in their organization, and this will be his fifth year pitching at Pawtucket. The third baseman from the Tidewater Tides, number 17, Tom O'Malley. Tom O'Malley walked in the second and singled in the fourth. In fact, 11 RBIs in 11 games this month. And he's got teammates at first and second. Lemke at second, and Carl Nichols is at first, who just singled. Smith picks up the grounder down at first. Down at second base, Mark Lemke out of Richmond. And over at first, good look at Carl Nichols. There's some great looking specimens in this ball game. Pete McCannum looking on. Four to one, the National League leads. We play with one out in the top of the fifth inning. Ron, we had that shot of Pete McCannon, and he's happy as a manager now, but at first he wasn't sure he wanted to be a manager in the minor leagues. And managed a couple of years, then went on to work as a roving instructor in the Cubs organization, and now he's in his second year with the Iowa Cubs. And I'm sure he doesn't enjoy being 20 games under 500, but he enjoys the fact that he's instructing young ball players who might be on their way up to the major league. Count goes to one and two. Bolton 
on the court, not on overpowering. Another pitcher has pretty good control of his curveball, his, his changeup, and spots the fastball. Uses that to set up his breaking pitch. 1-2 delivery by Bolton. Curve ball in the outside corner, and he gets him for the second out of the inning, and O'Malley is gone on the strikeout. The first baseman from the Mentioned Nashville he uses Sounds. the fastball to set up the breaking ball. This one is a very good location. Right over the outside corner for the strike. Tom O'Malley back to the dugout. That ends a string of four hits by the National League, which puts them on top of the ball game, 4-1. Scotty Madison. Seen Madison hit left-handed. Now he gets a chance to go back to the right side. And the book on him is that he's a very good hitter from both sides of the plate. Sprays the ball all around. Not too much power. Fouls that one just over the dugout and then takes a giant leap from one section to another. And the fans here in Columbus, a lady very excited. She, oh, the little guy got himself a souvenir. <laughs> League got one in the second, one in the fourth, and they have come on with two more in the fifth as that pitch almost gets away from Bolton. Adam Peterson came in to start the inning. And now has given away to Tom Bolton. Bolton was originally scheduled to pitch the sixth in the seventh, I think Bucky said, over the bullpen phone, but with Peterson struggling, Bolton finds himself into the ball game and in an earlier. So there might be some other changes down the line. Two on the count, two out. Bolton swung on and missed, and the count goes even at two. Nothing fancy here, just a fastball. Might have been out of the strike zone. Madison chasing, pitch that was up and away. will score for sure as Lemke comes home and they're going to bring Bolton to the plate it's Nichols and Cabrera drops the ball it's six to one they call it a game of inches and there's no doubt on this base hit by Scotty Madison please Third now base umpire Joe Mickle with the call. The Nashville Sounds. Greg Vaughn, pretty good Number relay. To Velarde, he turns Peter and Barnes. makes an accurate throw to the plate. One hop. But Cabrera cannot hold on, and the second run scores. Nichols with two out is waved home by Beecham, not taking any chances. He's trying to pick up that extra run on the double. The throw is in plenty of time. Cabrera just can't hold on. I mentioned a moment ago the physical specimens in the ballgame, and, and Nichols is one of those, and Corbera was trying to keep an eye on both him and the baseball, and it popped out of his mitt. It'll bring up Gerald Clark. Skeeter Barnes is the pinch hitter, and he lops a foul down the right side. one of the veterans in this ballgame now with the Reds organization spent some time with Montreal St. Louis curveball just misses down low and the count is even at one Scotty Madison over a third base and line foul down the right field side. In the MVP voting, don't forget, Scott Coolball, the leading vote getter right now, Mark Lemke second, and Tom O'Malley, number three in the balloting. You can choose the MVP. There's the number to call. It'll cost you only 95 cents for this AAA All-Star game. one of the veterans in the ball game and we talked to Pete McCannon yesterday about Skeeter Barnes and what did he have to say he'd rather see Babe Ruth himself <laughs> at the plate in a tough situation than Skeeter Barnes very tough out 
that he's a tough out in the clutch situations. Uh, I may exaggerate a little bit, but I'd rather see Babe Ruth. Yeah. Even at two. You have to have the feeling that Skeeter Barnes has done something against the Iowa Cubs this year. Or done a lot against the Iowa Cubs. Madison with his lead at third. Fastball just misses inside. So the count is full at 3-2 with two out top of the fifth. And the National League has punched it out to a five-run lead over the Americans. Madison he represents the Red Dots. Breaking pitch gets away from the catcher. Will not have a play at the plate, and it's 7-1. to one. On the ball four, Barnes down to first. Got away from Francisco Cabrera. Madison showed some good base running instincts at third base, and Cabrera having a rough night, particularly this inning. Pitches a breaking the ball right down from and the low. And looks very red Barons, number 15, in fact, he should have caught Miller. it. Maybe it looked as though he was crossed up on the play. Maybe looking for the fastball. You see the way he went off after the pitch and it breaks off his glove. Barnes walks and his teammate during the season, Scotty Madison, scampers home from third. Keith Miller out of Scranton, the ninth batter to come to the plate for the National League in the fifth. Seven to one seven hits for the National League. Put her flight out in the second, struck out in the fourth. All-Star team has been in the field a long time this inning, Kent. They've seen the rain come and go in this inning. Nash League maybe with a chance to build yet another run if Barnes decides to take off and try and get in the scoring position with two outs. 2-1 two pitch, it's fouled off. All-Star game. This is the second such event. The PCL, the International League, and also the American Association bringing all of their stars together. Last year was Buffalo, New York. And the second game played in Columbus, Ohio. Ron, it's interesting you mentioned the three leagues, and there are different styles of play. The PCL, the American Association, and the International League, they all have different reputations. Fastball as the runner is going, lofted into right center field and Johnson has it for the final out but not before the National League brings nine men to the plate they come up with five runs and as we head to the bottom of the fifth seven to one Moss Cabrera and Coolbar do leading off for the American League from the Columbus Clippers right fielder Kevin Mott. seven to one our score and here are the changes in left field is Skeeter Barnes. Play for Nashville. Keith Miller moves over from right into center. And Javier Ortiz is in right field. Here's the right fielder, Javier Ortiz. leading it off here in the fifth inning and the Americans trying to make up some ground one for one for him tonight single that came back in the second inning 
Rod, sometimes when a player is learning a new position, as Kevin Moss is, he's been a first baseman primarily throughout his career. This year he's moved to the outfield, but he hasn't let it affect his hitting. The new defensive posture for him, but he's been up among the league leaders in hitting. Tough play for Houston. He makes it look easy at shortstop. Just over Gardner's head, who was working his second inning. The catcher from the young man the loves to play baseball. On the run, a throw that's right on the money. Easy play for Houston. Not so for most shortstops. Some of the near capacity house at Cooper Stadium tonight for the second annual Triple A All Star Game. Those are some hearty souls. It rained pretty hard back in the fourth and the fifth. Cabrera, the catcher, looks at a curveball missing just outside. Francisco hit into a double play his first time up tonight. That ended the second inning. Curveball, and it's picked up by O'Malley. Long throw, and he's got him. Two up, two down for the American League in the fifth inning. Standings in the International League. Syracuse in the, the Eastern Division with a big lead over Rochester. Eight and a half Niners. games in Scranton and Number then Pawtucket. And in the West, it's Richmond by a game and a half. Jim Beecham's ball club leading Tidewater. Columbus only two back and then Toledo at nine and a half off the pace. Good tight race in that mm -hmm. Western Division. Bucky Dent's team just a couple of games back. Scott Coolball. He homered his last time up. I want to talk about the differences between the uh, three leagues. The PCL has a reputation as being a, a hitter's league. I believe a couple of years back, 33 hitters finished over 300. International League, more of a pitcher's type league. Uh, a lot of humidity, uh, bigger ballparks. The American Association falls somewhere in between. Good look at Mark Gardner. Hits just misses outside, and the count goes to 3 0. Well, as an example, the batting averages right now for the PCL 266 as a league, and the American Association 251, and in the International League 244. Ball toward a cool ball. Shortstop from the Columbus Clippers, number 12, Randy Velarde. Randy Velarde struck out. Paul strike three back in the third. Continuing to talk about the comparisons of the league. Home runs per team, 58 in the PCL. The American Association, 51 and 47 in the International League. The home runs, of course, could be attributed to the Ballparks in Albuquerque and Phoenix where the air is light. Colorado Springs falls in there and up in a high altitude. But they do say that the northern division of the PCL is more of a pitcher's league with Vancouver where you get uh, a lot of humidity and rain. Tacoma. Tacoma and Vancouver. We met with the PCL coaches today because most had not seen them as much as the other. And they said those two ball clubs, it was more representative as far as averages. And of course, we talk about the pitchers. I mean, the batters and some of the advantages they have and maybe the lighter air, the smaller ballparks. But also, you have to look at the pitchers and read in as far as ERAs, Ken. PCL, the ERAs have a tendency to be higher, and any pitcher that has an ERA under four is usually pretty effective. He's getting the job done, although it might not show it in the numbers. Malardi with the ground ball to second, and that will do it for the American League in the bottom half of the fifth inning. So school ball is erased after the walk, and as we head to the sixth inning, it is the National League seven to one. Ortiz, Houston, and Noboa. Triple-A All-Star Game from Columbus, Ohio. This is the second such event, the stars of the future. And let's give you an update as we take a look at the new catcher, Brian Dorsett. He plays here in Columbus. He's the new catcher replacing Francisco Cabrera. Four Clippers making it to this Triple-A All-Star Game. Let's update you on 
the voting for the MVP. Mark Lemke has moved in front. Tom O'Malley has moved up to second. Scott Coolbaugh to third, and there's the number if you want to vote. It'll only cost you 95 cents. 1-900-990-9000. Javier Ortiz of Albuquerque leads it off in the top of the sixth inning. National League on top by six. Base hit right up the middle, screams it. So the National League not wasting any time getting something started again here in the sixth the inning. They're coming up with five runs in the fifth. Indians, number two, Jeff Husson. Javier Ortiz. Spelling Mike Huff in the outfield. Houston one for three, and if you say, I thought we saw him just a moment ago, you did. He was a part of that uprising in the fifth inning. In fact, he started things going after Mike Huff had started the inning with a fly ball to right field. It was Houston who came out with a single and scored the third run of the ball game for the National League. Houston doesn't chase too many bad pitches. Usually bring a pitcher into the zone where he can make contact. Tom Bolton from Pawtucket replaced Adam Peterson last inning. Gets through Coolball on the left side. Let's go down to Joe Buck, who is standing by with Mark Lemke. Well, Ron, I'm down here with Mark Lemke, and Mark, first of all, you're first so far in our All-Star MVP voting, and you're having a heck of a game, aren't you? Yeah, it's going pretty good, and um, I'm happy to be uh, voted by the fans as first in the MVP voting. I'd like to thank the Lord, first of all, for giving me my health to be here, and uh, it's, a, it's a great experience to be at the All-Star game. Mark, you made a nice defensive play in the first inning. Everybody says that you're a gamer. You're a hustler. Is that true? Yeah, I try to give my best when I'm out on the field. You know, I, I figure if I hustle and, and give my best, I'll get the most out of my ability, and so far it's helped me out a lot. Let's go back up to Ron and Ken. Junior Noboa. Doubled and scored, got the fourth run of the game. Ron, that last play on that hard-hit ball by Houston was scored an error on third baseman Scott Coolball. the second error of the ball game on the American League. Here's cool boss. We mentioned that the least amount of experience of all these pros in this triple-A game he signed just a couple of years ago out of the University of Texas. Hopped over to the right side and that one will go back into the stands foul. That was a tough error. He's usually yeah, known for a very steady glove at third base. Almost turned him around on its way in the left field. Scott, one of uh, a number of fine ball players coming out of the system down in Austin under head coach Cliff Gustafson over the years. Noboa looks at a fastball inside. No way he could have extended his arms at that one. Down at second base, Javier Ortiz led off the sixth inning with a base hit. And over at first is Jeff Houston. the ground right back to Bolton double play as Ortiz moves down to third base it's a Taylor made double play ball and a ball hit back to the pitcher one hop quick throw to second base Velarde right about his chest high and the relay on the first saw him elude the running attention, please. Jeff Houston down at second now base for Lemke turn to double play from the Las Vegas Stars number three Joey Cora. Joey Cora into the ball game out of Las Vegas. Still has going a 25 game hitting streak. It started back on June the 16th. 313 the average. Doesn't hit for power. 29 RBIs. A couple years ago, Cora was the starting second baseman. 1987 season. Opened the season with the Padres. Ball. That went off to the right and into the parking lot. If you've just joined us in this AAA All-Star game, 
National League got things started in the second with a run, and then Coolball homered in the third for the Americans to tie it. But the Nationals came back with one in the fourth and five in the fifth, and that's how we stand at 7 1. You would think with that second base job now being locked up, more or less, by Roberto Alomar, one of the top young second basemen in the league. Cora has a chance here to show the scouts and other GMs that he might be a valuable player to pick up in a trade. Velarde with a nice play. And Cora, the Padres' number one pick out of Vanderbilt in 1985, third year in Triple-A baseball. And as we head to the middle of the sixth, seven to one, Nationals on top. Joey Cora is the new second baseman. He will uh, stay in the contest, and Mark Lemke will uh, come to the bench. And a new pitcher, Kent Merker, record of seven and six, two six five. And Kim, what can you tell us about him? Uh, he's a hard thrower. Has a good live fastball. The left-hander with 100 strikeouts, 109 innings. That gives you an indication of how he throws. Just 66 hits allowed in 109 innings pitch. One of the top prospects in the Braves organization. And of course, they're kind of stacked as far as pitchers themselves. So the youngster having to, to earn it maybe the hard way. And a homecoming for him tonight. He is from the Columbus suburb of Dublin. Your attention, please. Just west of here. Now pitching for the National League. From the Richmond Braves. We're talking about that pitching in the Braves organization. Tommy Green, another all-star tonight from the Richmond Braves. One manager uh, Jim Beecham staff, Jim Beecham staff, and in the major leagues, they have a very young starting rotation. The likes of Tommy Glavin, Marty Clary, Derek Lilliquist. I believe Clary is the, young, uh, the oldest of those at 27. The others are all under 24 years old. Billy Bates out of the ball game, and Glenn Allen Hill will pinch hit for him out of the Toronto organization. I wasn't sure we were going to see him tonight. He's bothered a little bit by a hamstring pull. And of course, a manager is not going to take a chance with his own or anybody else's ball player. And uh, Bucky, I'm sure, got an okay from the youngster that he was fit to play in this All-Star game this evening. Hill, an above average runner. You can understand why those hamstrings are very important to him. But he also has tremendous power. A few years back, the Toronto organization thought this young man was their top outfield prospect. Right now, this is his third year at Syracuse, so he hasn't progressed past the AAA level. Line shot base hit between short and third. Let's go to Joe Buck right now. He's in the stands. All right, yeah, let's get a taste of the crowd down here. I'm down here with Sam Hanna. And Sam, is this your first AAA All-Star game? Yes. And you are from this area, I understand. Yes, North End. And this is a big deal for the city of Columbus, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You all are waiting for, hopefully, a Major League Ball Club. Keep hoping. Keep hoping. Well, let's go back upstairs. Okay, I don't want now him to run out of words there. Four, Pete Coachman from the Pete Coachman. Trevors is going to be the pitch hitter for, Johnson for from the Lance Manchester Johnson. Red Wings, number 11, Butch Davis. I beg your pardon, Butch Davis, as Coachman will be the pinch runner for Glen Allen Hill, and we talked about a little bit of a mus muscle pinch, so uh, Coachman comes into the ball game. Down into the dirt, gets away, and he will head down to second base. Well, for a moment, Nichols lost the ball, and we thought he might be able to go to third. Here's a good look at Pete Coachman, the pinch runner. Coachman from Cottonwood, Alabama, plays for the Edmonton Trappers. This is his third year at the AAA level. Now 27 years old, a chance to kind of strut his stuff here in Columbus on national TV. And Butch Davis... We're talking about this morning that coming from the area that he does, possibly a little bit of a, a culture shock going that far away from home. <laughs> Smashes wanted to right field, and it is defensed perfectly by Ortiz as the throw comes back in for the first out. 
got good lumber on it, but they had him defense perfectly. Tom Cotsman, the coach, and Pete Coachman at second base. Now, occasionally, people get those two mixed up on phone calls and letters. And Coachman says occasionally he'll go to the park and ask Pete, any player changes today that I should know about? <laughs> <laughs> Morris from here in Columbus singled back in the first if you remember had the base running there ran towards second that was thrown out that he flied out of the fourth mentioned that weight program that manager Bucky Dent had his hitters on. Well, Hal Morris has been a beneficiary. Last year he had three home runs all season long. And here at the halfway point he's had nine. Bucky said the weight program's paying off with him. He's getting a little stronger. Maybe even a lot stronger. That's uh, six proven of six uh, this far in the season over last year. Bucky going over the lineup. Both managers, yep, they want to get everybody in that they that they possibly can. Marker with a count of one, two. Base hit into left field. And they're gonna hold the runner. Coachman is held. <laughs> Crowd wanted to see him run. I believe the reason why the crowd is booing, although he was held up by third base coach Sal Rende, the left fielder, Skeeter Bonds in left field the made no zippers. attempt to throw the ball home. Eight, Bond. He released it in the second. He was going to let the runner score. Trying to keep the double play in order. Greg Vaughn struck out and flied out. You know, Merker, who is pitching this inning, missed all of 1987 because of an elbow injury requiring surgery. Highest draft choice here, in fact, number five choice overall in the 1986 draft by the Atlanta Braves. And the consensus among the managers in the International League is to back up what you were talking about, the best fastball in the International League. Takes a little off that, gets a ball strike. And he's way in front, 0-2. When you mention fastballs, you have to mention strikeouts in the same sentence. Merker in 88 struck out 219 hitters. Six innings, that was at Durham. Six innings, that That's all I can ask for myself. Greg Vaughn, if they all would like to be there, but when the opportunity arises, he'll jump on it. Swung out and missed, and he got him on the train. It's great to have a number one like Kent Merker does, a good fastball, but you learn how to pitch by throwing off-speed pitches and keeping hitters like Greg Vaughn off balance. Well out in front for the strikeout. Good look at Merker. Two out. Bottom of the sixth inning. 7-1 National League leading in this AAA All-Star game. The stars of the future. Hey, Jim Wilson. Jim would like to show his abilities, why he has 80 RBIs coming into this All-Star contest. But he has been blank so far tonight. Not to take anything away from Jim Wilson, but talking to the coaches in the... PCL, they say that Calgary Park is really built for the hitters. Very small, compact, and you can see Jim Wilson is anything but that. You know, another interesting thing in talking to those coaches in the PCL, talking about when they go to, to Calgary and, and, uh, and Edmonton, about when hockey season is still on, that, that the baseball teams are, are arranged around that. Otherwise, you're going to look and see a lot of empty seats. Pete Coachman, the pinch runner, after Glenn Allen Hill had singled, he's at third base. And 
Hal Morris, who had a solid single out of Columbus, is over at first. Two out the American League trying to close the six-run gap. Merker fires with a strike. Tickets Merker got for tonight's ball game on the ground. Houston flips it over to Joey Cora, and that will do it. So a couple of base hits go awry, and as we head to the seventh, our score remains seven to one with Nichols, O'Malley, and Madison. Do Coolbaugh and Madison in the number four spot, and here's the number to call if you want to help select the MVP. One nine hundred nine nine zero nine thousand. And we have changes in the ball game. Butch Davis has moved into center field, replacing Lance Johnson. Pete Coachman at second base, replacing Billy Bates. And Steve Olin is on the mound. Forty-three innings pitch, thirty-six strikeouts, thirteen walks. Carl Nichols gets a look at a very unique delivery, to say the least. The Ola reminding you of maybe a Kent to Colby. Dan Quisenberry with the sidearm, almost underhand type delivery, and he's out in front, 0-2. Very familiar situation for Olin. He's never started a game in pro ball. 124 relief appearances, 49 saves, and he has 19 this year as he gets Nichols on the strikeout. This type of delivery, you're bound to get a sinking fastball, and watch the action on his pitch as it reaches home plate. Right underneath the bat of Carl Nichols. Well, that's the reason right there, as we said, 19. He's tied with Mark Eichhorn of Richmond with 19. Steve Olin out of Colorado Springs. And consider this. That's one of the ballparks that was <laughs> tabbed as a hitter's ballpark. So some pretty good numbers there he has recorded this year as Tom O'Malley steps in. You saw the name Mike Eichhorn, Mark Eichhorn up there in the league leaders with saves, but... He's now in Atlanta doing his pitching for the Braves. These managers love to see those ground ball type pitchers come out of the bullpen. Keep the ball on the ground in late innings and that breaking ball running inside. Looked like I had a pretty good piece of the plate, but home plate umpire Jeff Evans. That it was inside. Two on the count. Top of the seventh inning. Seven to one. The National League on top. Little bit of a threat in the sixth inning by the American League, but they stranded him. One of the second, one in the fourth, and five in the fifth for the National League. And the single run for the American League. A Solo shot by Scott Coolbaugh to the opposite field out of Oklahoma City, and that's been it for the American League. Ball four. And let's go to Joe Buck. All right, we're going to drop down in age this time, and we are going to talk to a young fan here at the ball game tonight, and his name is VJ. And VJ, are you having a good time at the All Star game? Yes. And what is your favorite part about coming to the ballpark? Eating. Eating? You don't care about the game, you just want to eat? Yes. Yes. Who are you rooting for tonight? American. The American League. Let's go back up to the booth. Okay, Scotty Madison. The third baseman, or the first baseman, I should say, will step in. One out and a runner down at first base. Scotty one for three tonight, double, couple of RBIs. Every Monday night, host Warner Fusel takes you out to the ballpark. It is a great look at America's national pastime.
Major League Baseball magazine, 7.30 Eastern Time. Scotty Madison hanging tough on these deliveries, these sinking deliveries from Steve Olin. Still finding himself in somewhat of a hole at one ball and two strikes. And this is where your ability as a hitter to hit the ball to all fields really comes into play. Madison spoiling tough pitches, looking for something he can handle a lot better. Now to first base, Tom O'Malley, who walked. Nichols started off the inning as a strikeout victim. Skeeter Barnes is due, and the pitch gets away. Throw is down, and he is safe. Didn't slide as he thought that Dorset would not come up with the ball that quickly. Dorset gets after it in a hurry, breaks off his glove, breaking ball inside. Now, Malley doesn't get much help from the infielders, and the key is that Velarde might have put a deke on him, acted like the throw wasn't coming. And this play is a lot closer than it should have been. Tom O'Malley not checking to see how far the ball was away from Brian Dorsett. He just started down to second. 2-2 Two -two pitch. It's away and it's full. Pete McCannon. Pete's got to be extremely pleased right now with his ball club on top by six. Seven runs on eight hits. He did mention they were going to play to win. He just didn't say by how much. In these type of games, you anticipate a, a tight ball game because of the fact that a lot of the hitters haven't seen many of these pitchers. Strike on the inside corner, and Madison is gone on the strike three. Olin from the Pacific from the Coast Nashville League to Madison of the American Barnes. Association. Slider over the inside corner for call strike three. Skeeter walked his last time up. Came in in the fifth. Bouncer up the middle. Velarde and that will do it. So let's take a break. Our score remains 7-1. to The National League on top of this one. And do up. Maz. Dorset and Coolball. Defensive changes out of the Buffalo Ball Club. Jay Bell is now at shortstop. Your attention, please. Sandy Alomar Jr. Now, is behind the plate. From the Buffalo Bisons, number 30. And the new Dorn pitcher Taylor. is Dorn now Taylor. Pitching. Also from, from Buffalo, 7-7, seven and seven, ERA of 273. Sandy Alomar, now playing shortstop. Thorn Taylor led the American the Association to earn run average a year three, ago with an excellent Jay ERA Bell. of 2.14. I had a look at his stats this year. Veteran pitcher, sinker slider, has spent some time in the major leagues with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Led the American Association in ERA last year. Leading up for the American League, the right fielder from the Columbus Clippers, number 22, Kevin Muss. Three years, Triple A level. Here's the type of pitcher might be able to fill in in case of injury in the Major League level. He has had experience. And this year, he's given up just 84 hits in 105 innings. So he's been difficult for the opposition to reach for any succession of hits. Kevin Maws of Columbus will lead it off. Swings and fouls it back. There's an older brother, Jason. This is in the outfield of the Yankee system. Looks at a pitch outside. Also on Taylor, once fan 15 batters in a row in an American Legion game. That was in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. That's not 15 in the ball game. That's in a row. <laughs> right away, you see something very unusual. His pitching style, at least while winding up. 
Watch the double windup. Brings the ball over his head twice. Might have a way of throwing the hitters off. There's one. Again. Look three times this time. Now that is uh, certainly unique. When's the last time you saw that? I, I have never seen anybody do that. Pops it up behind the plate. Alamari giving chase, but it's well back into the stands. Sandy Alomar, of course, getting a, a lot of publicity. He was surprised at his size as we talked to him coming out of the dugout today. A very big guy. His brother, Roberto, is now playing second base for San Diego. Of course, at second base position, you don't expect a bigger player. And, and he's smaller than Roberto. I should say Sandy is a lot larger than his brother, Roberto. And their dad, Sandy Alomar Sr., who is the third base coach for the Padres, smaller than both of his sons. Swung on and fouled off as Maz is making Taylor work for it here as the leadoff man of the seventh inning. Bottom of the seventh, seven to one. National League over the American League in this AAA All-Star game. Second year for this format, International League, PCL, and the American Association bringing their best players together for an All-Star game. Great idea and great reception where they had gone. Swung on and missed and he gets it. The catcher from the Columbus Clippers, number 34. And let's Ryan go to Joe Wilson. Buck. We're on him down here with Jim Wilson of the American League squad. And Jim, so far everybody's been talking about Greg Vaughn, Todd Zeal. How about Jim Wilson? You're putting together quite a season, aren't you? Well, I've, uh, I've been hitting well the last month and a half or so, and I'm, I'm feeling a lot more confident at the plate. And, um, you know, if the season finishes strong, then, you know, I'll call it a good year. But uh, it's too early right now to talk about that. 80 RBIs, you're probably saying, Kevin Mitchell, who's that? You are really, that is a total that's almost unheard of, and we're just about halfway through the season. Well, we got it. we've been having a lot of guys on base, and I've been fortunate to be the guy that's up at that time. So, you know, that's a thing that, you know, without your teammates, you can't do it. But uh, it's nice to have them, though. Let's go back upstairs. Thanks, gentlemen. Brian Dorsett. Who also was out of Columbus at the plate is at 333 in this park this year. In fact, his troubles have been on the road where he is at 231. Just fouled it off his foot and he's trying to walk it off just a bit. And here's a guy that yesterday, as the headshots were being taken and the interviews were being done, my broadcast partner, <laughs> Tim Singleton, is a pretty good sized guy. What are you, 6'5 or 6'4? Okay. And this guy walked by and, and the, the, the shadow covered you up. <laughs> Another one of uh, the fine specimens that we talked about. Good looking young catcher. One one count. Gets it all and that one is out of here in front of the home folks. You know that's got to feel nice when you do it in front of your hometown fan. Brian Dorsett picks on a pitch. It's in the middle of the plate. Dorn Taylor hangs something in the middle, and Brian Dorsett does what you're supposed to do. Get the daylights out of it, and you can see the young fans going for a souvenir, and at least one of them is going to be happy tonight. Boy, there was no doubt. No doubt is... Which one of the youngsters got it? Did the, the redhead get it? Well, over that wall, you can see that outer wall back there that used to be the wall you had to hit a ball over to get a home run in left field. There's Dorsett, who just hit the home run, his eighth home run here in this ballpark this year. Putting the catching gear back on. Vic Rodriguez is the pinch hitter for Scott Coolball. Portland, the Twins organization, 327 with eight home runs and 39 RBIs. Hammer 
is that one just foul? Rodriguez started in pro ball when he was 16 years old. The Orioles signed him out of Puerto Rico. He's had quite a long minor league career playing for different organizations. He was with St. Louis for a while. St. Louis organization. Jay Bell with his first attempt of the night, and he gets him. And let's go down to Joe and talk with the newest hero in this All-Star game. This is Brian Dorsett, and Brian, what a charge. That was a bomb, and it's off your bat in front of the home crowd. You have to be happy with that. Oh, very happy. It's just a privilege and a blessing to be here tonight. I mean, the way the season started off, things I've gone through, I just praise God for the opportunity to be here. The staff and management at Columbus is a great city to play in. Really exciting for me. What do you consider the best part of your game, hitting or catching? Right now, you know, I've been playing uh, both well uh, defensively and uh, in the offensive end. You know, something I've really come around this year is with my offense and a little more consistent. So, you know, I'm happy with both right now. Let's head back upstairs. Thanks, gentlemen. And again, congratulations to Brian. Boy, he jettisoned that thing out of here. Just foul again. I was talking about that outer wall beyond the left field fence. And that is at least 450 feet away from home plate. That outer wall and only two players have ever hit one over it. And they both are Hall of Famers. Joe DiMaggio and Ralph Kiner. That is quite a poke. Two one to count. In fact, that's that's almost impossible to believe it. The park had to have been designed by a <laughs> former pitcher. <laughs> you would almost have to stack your outfielders if you get a real pole hitter, huh? Uh, you should have seen some of the relays. That'd be a nine-man relay from, <laughs> from that deep. Three run to count on Velarde. Jordan Taylor, who came in this inning, struck out Maz, the lead man in the seventh inning, then the home run by Dorset. Rodriguez grounded out, and now with two out, Velarde. Strikeout and a ground out victim. We mentioned Taylor's been around for a while. Not the quite hard thrower that he was in the past, but now he's developed breaking balls and trick wind-ups. Quickly, all with a gun, but he overthrows it. Throw back into second, but not in time, and Velarde is on to the throwing arrow by Sandy Alomar. And there's two parts to every play, and Alomar quickly from behind the plate for a big man pounces on the ball, and he does have the a strong arm, but the second part of this play the isn't as good as the Travis. first. He throws it wild over the head of Scotty Madison down the right field line. So it's going to be a hit and an error. Two out. And it will bring up Pete Coachman. We mentioned that we might see Velarde go the distance tonight because being the only shortstop in uh, camp with Zavella being called up. And as Coachman walked in yesterday, I had to laugh as, as Bucky went running over to him and asked him how much shortstop <laughs> Pete kind of looked at him. Second and third, maybe. Strike to the outside corner. Count goes even at one. Occasionally in these All-Star games, you see outfielders playing different positions, uh -huh. but you don't see that too often with the second baseman moving the shortstop. It might be a little bit too much to ask, and if Coachman went in defensively at second base. Good luck at Bucky Dent. I'm sure Bucky can appreciate how hard it is to play shortstop. Looped into center field. It's going to fall for the base hit. Velarde will come home to score, and Coachman at first with a bloop single. A 
let's update the MVP. Mark Lemke still on top. O'Malley is second, Scott Kuba third, and Scotty Madison. Here's the number. Help us select it. 1-900-990-9000. And I believe after the eighth inning, we will cut it off. After the eighth inning, we'll have to cut it off so we can make the announcement at the conclusion of the telecast. Butch Davis. He came in replacing Lance Johnson is the batter. Just misses outside. And the count goes to 2-0. Four Major League home runs for Davis. Two of them off Ron Guidry. It's interesting to note that Guidry was here at Columbus on rehab and has decided to retire rather than continue his career. He had elbow surgery during the spring and just couldn't make it all the way back. And I'm certain that the home runs that Butch Davis hit off Guidry were not of the Ron Guidry of 10 years ago. Go back to 1978. I can remember Ron Guidry going 25-3 and three for the Yankees. He was one of the toughest pitchers I ever faced. Line drive into right field. Javier Ortiz gathers it for the third out, but not before the American League comes up with a Dorset home run. And they pick up another as Velarde scores, and it's 7-3. to three. We'll head to the eighth. Well, if you want to know where these leagues are, the International League, you can see we are in Columbus tonight. Toledo, Rochester, Syracuse, Pawtucket, Scranton, Richmond, and Tidewater. And the American Association, and we won't run through all of them, but you can see that they are a little bit more spread than is the International League. But speaking about being spread out, there is some major league travel in the Pacific Coast League. And look at Edmond and, and uh, Calgary way up there and of course up in the northwest it's uh, no piece of cake to come from tacoma st edmonton this time of year it doesn't really get dark until about 10 30 maybe 11 o'clock at night they don't usually the lights aren't really that effective during the course of a ball game you get a good quick ball game you might still be able to squeeze in nine up here <laughs> New third baseman, Vic Rodriguez, has moved into third, replacing Scott Coolball. And the pitcher is Rick Lucan. Four and one, 13 saves, 1.91 as ERA. Lucan's supposed to be a Todd Worrell look-alike as far as his style of pitching. Hard fastball, hard slider. Butch Davis on the run, and that's a nice job defensively. I think it's Peter Barnes coming over to guide him just a little bit. Davis, you see the concentration on his the face right and fielder, reaches at the last second the and all the Dukes, number 43, Javier Ortiz. Javier Ortiz came into the ball game and promptly singled back in the sixth inning. Moving into the starting rotation. We'd like to remind you, you can help us vote the MVP tonight. Give us a call. 900 number, and it'll cost you 95 cents. 990 9000. That's the number you have to call. Pete McCannon, his ball club on top, 7-3 to three as we play top of the eighth inning. Lucan is still another Texan in this ballgame. Resides in Houston, played at Texas A&M. Off the fist, back quickly is Coachman, and he's got it for out number two. The shortstop from the Buffalo Bisons, 
Number two. Clipper fan who would come to see him play tonight in the All-Star game, the second edition of this Triple-A All-Star game. Jay Bell took over for Jeff Houston at shortstop. And Bell was up with Pittsburgh at the beginning of the year. He's come over to Pittsburgh in a trade for Felix Fermin. Fermin now playing shortstop for the Cleveland Indians. When you're talking about trading, I guess you have to mention that Bell started out in the Minnesota organization. Then moved over to Cleveland, and in the deal, he was traded for Burt Blylevin. The first man he faced in the major leagues was Blylevin, and he took him deep. <laughs> you know, in Bell, he only hit 215 in May, and then 325 the rest of the year, so he's turned it up a few notches. Swings and misses. Good pitch by Lucan. Lucan was a starter for five years, then switched to the bullpen just last year. Slider supposed to come to the plate, look like a fastball, and then dive at the last second, and he got that effect, and that pitch to Jay Bell. Tried it again, but missed outside. Tell you what, since moving to the bullpen, he's got 27 saves in the last season and a half. Around a lot of times you see pitchers move to the bullpen because they don't have three pitches. Bullpen pitcher has to go through the lineup maybe once, maybe time and a half, and you can get by with a fastball and a slider. Well, I'll tell you, he shows right now why he has 27 saves in the last season and a half. The former Texas Aggie comes in and puts down the National League one, two, three. Score stays seven to three. We'll be right back. Made the big damage with the National League five in the fifth inning. Kubai and Dorsett with home runs and Lemke. Two hits and three RBIs. That's how we stand. Bottom of the eighth inning, seven to three. Help us out. We only got one half of an inning left, and you can help us select the MVP of the ballgame. 1-900-990-9000. 1-900-990-9000. Help us select the MVP of this one. Who do you think should walk away with that feather in this cap? This guy right here, Hal Morris, has a couple of hits. Single in the first, and then again in the sixth inning. Horn Taylor working his second inning as the ground ball to Madison and one down in the bottom of the eighth inning. Let's go down to Joe Buck. Well, Ron, I'm down here with the starter for the American League, Tommy Drace. And Tommy, you started for your team, and how'd you pitch? I felt that pitch pretty well. It was uh, nice to go out and just have a good outing. There's a lot of good players here, and it's exciting to be here, and I feel pretty good about it So after tonight. The usual sentence that follows your name is, he pitched two no-hitters in one week. I'm sure that you would trade that in for a legitimate chance at the major leagues, wouldn't you? Oh, definitely. I mean, that's why you're in the game, is to get a chance in the big leagues. And the two no-hitters were nice, and I just would love to get a chance to pitch in Chicago sometime this year. Let's go back upstairs. Thanks, gentlemen. It's Greg Vaughn out of Denver looking for his first hit tonight. A couple of strikeouts and popped out to the catcher. Vaughn has done very well in past All-Star games, but that he's working on a collar. 0 for 3 so far. The double windup coming from Dorn Taylor. And a swing and a miss. 7 to 3, bottom of the eighth. Dorn Taylor. What benefit do you derive from the double pump like that, Ken? The only thing I can see is that he throws the hitters off. Now he's He's pumped three times once this evening. Most of the time, it's just a double pump and a delivery. He tosses up a split finger fastball and gets Taylor to strike out for the third time this evening. So Greg Vaughn goes down for the third time he on strikes tonight. From the Calgary Greg Clemens, Vaughn, I should say, strikes out for the third time this evening. It appears to be the split finger fastball of veteran Taylor having all the pitches. Two out of the bottom of the eighth. Time's running out on that MVP. <laughs> Got one out left. one 900 9000 Your call could make the difference. And it's up to you tonight. Can't point the finger at us or anybody else. 
Big Jim Wilson, he's got a collar on tonight. He'd like to close out this second AAA All-Star game with, with a wrap. And Taylor throwing a split finger. It used to be the pitchers in the major leagues were learning it at, at that level. Now you have pitchers arriving in the majors with the ability to throw the split finger. Go back to the manager Roger Craig of the Giants. He was the one who taught the Detroit staff when he was the pitching coach over there for Sparky Anderson, then moved on and very successful manager for the San Francisco Giants. And now pitchers in the minor leagues have already perfected that pitch when they arrive at the majors. I'll tell you another guy who's got 14 wins at the All-Star break for the Houston Astros who says thanks to him because he taught it to Mike Scott. And Mike's got the very large hands and it's been devastating for him. Pops it up on the left side. J. Bell, the short stop, and he will gather it for the third out. So we head to the final frame of this one with the National League still on top, leading by four. Due up, it's Morris, Vaughn, and Wilson. And the National League on top, seven to three. And my guest is Sam Wilson. And Sam, you are from the Quad Cities, and you have been sent here on a mission, haven't you? We have. We've been here today talking to owners and general managers, hoping to impress them that the Quad Cities would be an excellent location for an expansion AAA franchise. We have a beautiful remodernized stadium. Uh, we have 400,000 people. We have uh, a lot of fan interest in AAA baseball. And uh, we hope that when the major leagues expand and there is an opportunity that the Quad Cities are on the map and ready for a AAA franchise. Do you feel like you've had any luck? We think that we've really impressed the owners with the opportunity in the Quad Cities for a good AAA franchise. Let's go back upstairs. Thanks, gentlemen, and uh, good luck to Mr. Wilson and his group. Top of the ninth inning. Junior Noboa out of Indianapolis gets a chance to help his ball club extend the four-run lead. One for four tonight, double and scored. That happened back in the fifth. Swung on and the first pitch lops it to center field. Butch Davis will have it for out number one. New pitcher in the ball game is by Brian Clark. 11 and 2. And you know, most importantly for him, as you look at the ERA, happy birthday <laughs> to Brian. He is 33 the years of age today. From the Las Vegas 16 Stars years in professional baseball. He's a veteran, and he's been around, been in the major leagues. Seattle, Toronto. His best pitch was a breaking ball. I hit against Brian Clark over in the American League, and was always afraid of that hook. Had it always in the back of my mind that he was going to throw it sooner or later. He comes in with a fastball. And we talked about the ERAs in the Pacific Coast League. And Brian Clark's at 2.72. You know a pitcher's doing a good job, although he pitches one of, one of the pitcher's parts of Tacoma. You know, another point to be made. This year, 74 players 30 years and older in the in AAA baseball. Last year, there were only like 51 or 52. And I think the reason for that, Ken, is the philosophy is changing a little bit in the big leagues as far as guys that they are keeping around to bring up and help. You get down in a stretch situation, your team needs a, a player to help you. You're going to go to a veteran player. At least most managers want to go with a veteran. Cora lops it to center field, and Davis is there for out number two. You know, Jim Beecham made an interesting point today at the meeting. He said, my philosophies have changed over the years, and particularly in being around AAA baseball. He said, we used to think that 25 and 26-year-olds, that they, you better go look for something else if you had not made it to the majors. He said, I think there are a lot of guys in their late 20s and even 30 and early 30s now that can help a big league ball club. The way the money is going now, you know the players want to hang on as long as they can, and possibly get a shot at the big dough in the major leagues. Alomar, high, deep to center field and right over the top of the 400-foot mark. He mixed in the ability to catch 
defensive ability has not been questioned. And his hitting is very good. You can see why he's one of the top prospects, and a lot of teams would like to have Sandy Alomar Jr. on their ball club. First pitch he sees, he hits well over the 400-foot mark in straightaway center field. Well, Brian Clark had gotten out the first two batters that he had faced in the ball and also Cora both of them fly balls to center field but neither was deep but partner that one was deep you can see Joe Buck down in the in the dugout and we'll try to talk to Alomar before the ball game is over Boy, almost reminiscent of what Bo did last night not quite as far but that's pretty good poke in this part well he comes all the way from Las Vegas probably has never been to Columbus before sees one pitch and hits it out of the park that's that's a good trip also, I'm sure he would love to say to those that maybe question <laughs> some of the PCL clubs in their hitting average that, hey, I can hit it anywhere. Just displayed it. Velarde with the throw, and that will do it. But not before the National League comes up with one more run and added a towering home run by Sandy Alomar to straightaway center field. We head to the bottom half of the night. Eight to three, our score, Maz, Dorset, and Rodriguez. Well, they're down to three outs. The American League's got to do something here. Seven to three, they trail. And there's the new pitcher, Stu Tate. Career high, 12 saves already this year. Played his college baseball at Auburn University down in the Southeastern Conference. Now yeah, does his pitching for the Phoenix Firebirds, the PCL, Giants farm team, and his numbers overall will indicate that he's a hard thrower. 54 strikeouts and 45 in the third inning. The National League from the Phoenix Firebirds. Number 39, Stuart Tate. You see in 45 innings pitched, 54 strikeouts. National League trying to get a, a little revenge after last night in the Major League All-Star game. Again. And they lead it by five as they get an insurance run and <laughs> Really tough shot. Here's uh, Mr. McCannon. He'll be heading on back to to it's Iowa to tomorrow. And he he did. We'll get over. No, I, I beg your pardon. Mr. McCannon again. And they're going over the lineup. Well, that lineup part about this time of game with all the changes it starts to look like a weather map with the uh, you know low fronts clashing. <laughs> He's looking to see just who Bucky might send up against Stu Tate here in the bottom of the ninth. He's going to give Bucky what for the National League holds on, and they got a five-run lead right now because Bucky lost all three times he played in the All-Star game in the majors, and he said he certainly didn't want to lose this one tonight, his first opportunity to manage an All-Star game. Well, Bucky shouldn't feel like the Lone Ranger. I played in three All-Star games myself in the American League, and, and we lost all of them, too. <laughs> One pitch to Maz, and he's way in front of the count, 0-2. Stu Tate. And, of course, interesting that he should come up here in the, in the ninth inning. The university that he comes from is the guy who really set him on their ear last night, Bo Jackson, in the Major League All-Star game. You can see Mr. Tate is getting the ball up there fairly quickly to the plate. And there's a few scouts behind home place with radar guns just checking out to see how hard these pitchers are throwing. Rounder to the second baseman. Cora. That's a nice move from deep in the hole, and there's one gone. Now we mentioned radar guns. Bucky Dent's interesting thoughts on radar guns, as, especially as far as the Royals. relievers are concerned, as we Number take a look 11, at Ed, Ed Hearn. Hearn coming up to pinch hit for Brian Dorsett. Bucky said he thought that radar guns were really helpful the second night that a relief pitcher came in to see if there was a difference between the, his first night in and his second night out of the bullpen. If it was any less further on in the season, he might not bring him in in a tough situation if there's that much of a discrepancy in his fastball from the first night and the second night swings and misses quite a story on this young man as far as a comeback he went from the Mets to the Royals that was in the David Cone trade in 87 and injured his arm in in the spring rotator cuff had surgery and only played 30 games total 87 and 88 
Bell over to Madison, and we are one out away. Vic Rodriguez is due, and yes, he will back. So two out, bottom of the ninth inning. Eight to three, National League, leading the American League. Sure, Mr. Tate is no stranger to Vic Rodriguez. Both of them playing in the PCL, but one for the American League ball club, American League affiliate for the Beavers, affiliated with the Twins, and the Firebirds with the Giants. So that's why they're on two different sides tonight. Bucky Dent, 1978. And the folks were howling up in Gotham. He was the MVP in the World Series as the Dodgers were the victims. Swung on and popped up, back up over us. Don't look at me. I didn't bring my glove tonight, Rod. I'm not sure this tarp over our head would be a great deal of help anyway. <laughs> not, not to mean that that your glove wouldn't be a good <laughs> one one pitch is high now the catchers have had a, a big say in this one tonight as far as showing their prowess Alomar in the last inning hits a towering shot and of course Dorset really powered one out of here that thing was almost a line drive just kept on rising good look at Alomar 2-1 delivery up high How many of these players will one day be in the major leagues? Scott Coolbaugh to the right. Had a home run tonight for the American League. Dorsett there also had a home run. Billy Bates sitting on the edge of the steps. Youngster trying to get over shoulder problems and it is, is Bates. Coming back nicely, but it's been a little bit slower, I think, than he would have liked. 3-2 the count. Dick Rodriguez, the last hope if he can't get on board for the American League. Swung on and missed, and he got it. So the 1989 AAA All-Star Game will go to the National League as Stu Tate comes in in relief and puts them down in order. One, two, three. We didn't even need. National League does get the revenge. Boy, Keith. At least at the AAA here. level. Oh, wait, Joey. Oh, the oh, three. Oh, it's an exciting oh, ball game. A lot of hitting, especially early oh, in the game. Oh, wait, and National League coming on with the eight to three two. victory over the American League. Shows the Nationals won it by five. As Ken said, we've seen a good one tonight. All evening long, you've been voting on the most valuable player. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we will let you know who would it be in this 1989 All-Star game. I'll tell you in just a moment. In the National League it did the damage in the fifth inning with five, and they win it by five as Martinez gets the win. Trujillo, the loser, Kulbaugh, cool Dorsett, and Alomar with home runs. The MVP of this 1989 Stars of the Future AAA All-Star Game, it is Mark Limke of Richmond, plays for the Atlanta Braves organization, and Joe Buck is with him down in the dugout right now. Gentlemen? Well, folks, you wanted him as your MVP, and here he is, Mark Lemke. Mark, you had a terrific game. We talked earlier, but you kept on with it, and you really have to be happy with the way that you performed tonight. Yes, I was happy just to be elected and being able to play in this game and to win the MVP of it. Uh, I guess that's just a great thrill for me. Out of spring training, a lot of people thought that you were going to make the ball club, and I'm sure you did, too, and then the Atlanta Braves added Jeff Treadway. Added Jeff Treadway. And then, all of a sudden, you're down at AAA. And that had to be disheartening. Did you go out here with the attitude, hey, we're going to show them tonight? Yeah, that's right. You know, I was a little disappointed after spring training, but, you know, you kind of get over that right away, and you, you know you got a job here to do, and you just got to come out and try to do the best you can. Mark Lemke, congratulations, and let's go back upstairs. So congratulations to Mark, the most valuable player in this 1989 AAA All-Star Game from Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> The 
AAA All-Star Game at ESPN was brought to you by Domino's Pizza Incorporated. A hot, fresh, delicious pan pizza. Domino's Pan Pizza. Nobody delivers better. By new Extra Strength Brute 33 Antiperspirant Deodorant. And by the new Sterling 827. Grace Under Pressure. Our final score is the National League winning over the American League 8-3 in this AAA All-Star Game. Statistical data provided by Hal Sports Data of Boston, Massachusetts.